I'm gonna take you through this. This is from selling from a design perspective. I don't do a proposal in the truck and hand it out 20, 10 minutes later. I plan for the appointment. I drive by and walk around the job site before I ever meet the client. I wanna see as much of that property as I can, Google Earth searches. I look at the neighboring properties because these people are starting to keep up. If the neighbors have got a new project, I wanna know what it is. And I drive by at night. So many times clients wanna do landscape lighting because someone just down the street did it. And that's what their expectations are. And if they've got an ugly house, you've gotta be prepared for it. Because I've got clients that live in mega mansions, there's no way I can make something that's vinyl sided look like that house. So I need to be prepared. Photographing the property. I take as many photographs of the exterior of the house as I can so that I can be prepared for the sale. And often I actually draw with a silver ink pen right on the actual photograph of the client's house that I took. Where the fixtures are gonna go, what are the effects that I'm gonna create for them. I need to understand ordinances, especially in the desert southwest, you've got dark sky compliance issues. If you have questions about that, I'll answer it. But there's a lot of things you have to figure out that you can't do anymore because there's dark sky or responsible model lighting ordinances are being implemented, especially in the southwest. And you have to be careful of that. And then I take in the experience. I try to put myself in the customer's shoes. Now, I don't think about how many fixtures I can sell, but I want to try to understand, you know, is the lawn mowed, is it unkept? Are the trees trimmed? Do the trees need a haircut? All of those things are important because that builds the sale. Because I'm saying, you know, you, before I light this tree, we've got to trim it. If they don't mow their lawn and the place looks like crap and they've got pots that haven't been planted in three years, I may not even take this client on because they have no appreciation for what I'm gonna do. Homework, do a background check. I do that on every single one of my clients. I Google them, I search them. I wanna know do they spend money, I wanna know if they give a lot of money to charitable organizations. People that give a lot of money to charitable organizations will spend a lot of money with you. They're free with their money and they're good people. Discover their lifestyle. Do they have the orchestra play in their backyard? Do they have fundraisers? You need to understand because all of that impacts the planning that goes into it. And then I create a pre-sale. This is where the project is sold. You do not sell a project at the end, you sell it now you're actually going to sell yourself on that first appointment. You're gonna set yourself apart from everybody else they're gonna see. In my marketplace, landscapers will bring me in to sell the landscape lighting because they don't know how or they want me to provide even more product, more design for that client than they're capable of doing. When I'm in that house for the first time, that's where the sale is made. The sale is never made at the end. The sale is made when someone shows them that testimonial video or when everybody shows up and looks professional or you show up when you're well prepared. And then selecting samples. When I go to a client's house, I have samples ready in hand in my vehicle that I can show the clients. When I put the product in a client's hand, it sells itself. None of my competitors can put a fixture that weighs that heavy is that well built in their hands. It's very rare that any of the people that I would be going up against would have something like that. Very important to give them something to feel and then take it away from them and watch their reaction. Put something expensive, and jewelers do this all the time. They put a really expensive piece of jewelry that they know the client can't afford and then they take it away. And you watch that person's reaction. I guarantee it'll lead to a better sale you have to take control of the clients, and this is the first thing you do. And then no catalogs, no specs, no pictures. I have gone to so many appointments with landscapers, they'll bring the Kishler catalog and the Hinkley catalog. Don't do that. It's nothing says you're a rank amateur than bringing a bunch of catalogs to a sales. Have photographs that you've taken or that are specification pages of the products you're offering. The interview. Once again, this is where the sale is made. Let your ideas become their ideas. By finding out what's important to them, I literally go up to them and say, what are, well, what's your idea? Well, what do you think? And just shut up. You sometimes it takes five seconds for them to answer you, which feels like an attorney, but they'll tell you, well, I don't want the swing set lit. Or that tree, you know, we planted that when my dog Buffy died. And it's really important, it's grown up. You just, you pick up on so many things. And they'll tell you what they want. Give them, give them the opportunity, they'll tell you what they want. Pick up on it and then have their ideas become your ideas. Walk the project. 
I, I don't know how anyone can do it any other way. Get them to walk the project with you. Please get them to walk the project with you. Walk around the yard. This is an intimate space. Ask for the trust and then ask them for the check. I never ever do a project unless I'm getting a deposit. I'll do it on behalf of a professional, but I'll still ask them for a check. If I'm working at one of my customers at Southview Design, a huge landscape firm, I'll say, we need a check for half, and I don't say anything else. I don't say, but you know, you don't have to pay it tonight. I don't say that. I wait for them. They always write a check. They always write a check if they want a deposit. And they're not paying a deposit on the project. They're paying me for my design expertise. That's where the sale's made. If they'll pay me, Nels Peterson, to walk in and design a landscape lighting project for them, the, the job is sold. No one is ever backed out. Very seldom. It's important that you get paid for the design services you're about to do. And I know there are examples where you don't do that, but believe me, it is, there's no better way to close a sale because now they're invested in you. And, and, th and these people are gonna second guess you, but they're gonna stick with you because you've, they've already written out a check. And I always tell clients we'll apply it against the balance of whatever the project is. Go inside first, this is really important. I almost demand that they take me inside. We start inside first. Before you walk the project, you've got to get them to walk around the project unless they're handicapped. Even if they're old, get them out in their walker and have them walk out at least to the front yard. But if you can get them to let you into the bathroom of their master bedroom, they spend a lot of time there and that is the most intimate space, the master bedroom and the master bath. If you can get to go in there and look out the window, and they'll think you're crazy. But if they let you in, that job is sold. Make no mistake. <laughs> in my environment in northern Minnesota, and well in Arizona too, because it gets so hot there you can't go outside, but we spend so much time inside in Minnesota, you'd be amazed at how many people, most of people's time is spent in the bathroom and looking out the window in their kitchen. Go to their kitchen sink where they spend a huge amount of time and look out and see what it is they see. See if you can't give them something beautiful to look at. And then tell them that. You know, you look out this window a lot and there's that crab tree there. I'm gonna make that really nice. And just watch their expression. This is an intimate, emotional sale. No better way than to start inside. The other thing, if they've got a bunch of Chippendale furniture, don't choose a path light that looks like a flying saucer from the Jetsons. Choose something that's either basic, very simple designs, or don't do path lights at all. Nothing makes a real traditional home look contemporary than a field of path lights. Start thinking about how you can make it appealing to somebody that's very traditional. Vice versa too, if everything is stainless steel and modern art, Garden Light LED has tons of fixtures that appeal specifically to that new modern aesthetic or mid-century aesthetic. The design stage one, make a list and outline their experience. It's so hard to do, but you go back and you make a list of not only their expectations, but what you felt, what they felt, thoughts. Take notes on your clients and do it in your car before you leave the property, because you'll forget. But I always try to take at least 10 or 15 points that I took away from the customer. Focus on what's important to them. It's really hard to do that, because you know, I've done this house 100 times, I'm gonna do this. But really make sure you're focusing on what was important to them, whether it's security, overall illumination, my grandmother comes over and she can't get down the steps along the side of the house. Make sure you focus on what's important to them. Always give them something they don't want. You have to diffuse your client, not all of them. Not all of them are like that, but most customers really want to, they want to object to something. So give them something they don't want. It can be subtle. Find some way to sneak something that, that they know that they can reject and it'll completely diffuse them. All that animosity that's built up, people, professional salespeople, especially in the car industry, do that all the time. Get it out of the way. They want to reject you, get it out of the way on something that you can control. Give them the best product you can, which is why I'm here. There's a huge niche opening up, a huge chasm opening up in the landscape lighting industry, in my opinion, that can be filled with a product like Garden Light LED. Garden Light LED has a commitment to the installation community, now the design and specification. It sets you apart and it's incredibly high quality product. Give them less, but give them the best. It's so emotional and so important to people that live outdoors. And with the changing climate, if you, if you buy into that, at least in Minnesota, it's changing. People are being able to spend more and more time outside. The design, this is stage two. Storyboard every project. 
You don't have to agree with me, but I'll tell you what this is based on. This is based on the interior design community. You want to see professional designers, we're talking designers now, that own their client, meet a 55-year-old woman that can talk somebody into buying a $10,000 sofa. That woman owns her clients. Professional interior designers know how to sell. Good interior designers are good interior designers is because they can sell more than anyone else. Storyboard every project. It could just be a sheet with some information on it. I do complicated plans. I bring samples. And don't just leave it on the table. Put it in their hand. And when you hand them the storyboard, don't put it on easel. Give it to them. Have them take possession of it because you're going to ask them to pay for it. Use photographs of their project site whenever possible. One of the problems is you can always show examples of work you did to impress, which is very important, but show them that you were looking at their house and their project, their plan. Draw, annotate, put pictures of their things, their, their landscape for them to look at because that's what they want to see. This is what I envision for your project. This is what I did over at the Peterson house, but this is what I'm going to do for you. Try to show them something that is actually depicting their project. Use products that reflect the client's taste. We talked about that a little bit earlier. You have to be sensitive, especially on historical properties. You have to conceal the product or figure out some way so that it doesn't become looking like an add-on. Design the install as much as the placement. When I do a, a presentation to a client, I talk about where the transformers are going, how it's controlled, the aesthetics, the wires are gonna disappear. We're gonna core drill this. Try to overcome those objections before they come up. Controls, this to me is the icing on the cake. The clients want to be able to control their environment and whenever possible, give them, even if it's just a toggle switch by the kitchen that they can turn on or a remote control to turn off, make sure you do an excellent job, if at all possible, letting them take control of their landscape lighting and they will show people it. There are so many ways to take control of your clients and, and get them to interact with the system and those are the things that they show other people that come to the house. Hey, look at this, this is what I can do. The lighting is one thing, but controlling it is really, really crucial and we have more options now than ever before. The proposal, show photos of fixtures that you've taken or specification fixtures. Don't just bring a catalog. Show application images, not picture books. Show a detailed price breakdown. Now this is, this is what I do. I show my clients every damn bit of information I can. They see how much a wire net costs, they show how much, they see how much wire there is. Every single thing is broken down. It makes it easy to subtract and it makes it easy to add. And the numbers next to those individual parts are fairly small, and they can start justifying it. I don't believe in just showing one price for it all. I can't sell like that. But I find it very beneficial when people say, well, we gotta cut back. We'll take $10,000 off. I can't do that. I've gotta say, okay, we're gonna need to lose this many fixtures here and this many fixtures here, and we can reduce the wire. People will either let it go, or they'll, be, they'll get very specific as to what they want when they're empowered with the information. Show your professionalism. Plan to be the last presenter. I have clients getting different proposals from different design build firms. I tell people, you know what? I'm gonna be the most expensive, I'm gonna give you the best information, and I wanna be last. You're getting other bids, I wanna be the last guy. Call me when you got all the other ones. After you give them a 20, even 30 minutes uh, dog and pony show, they're gonna forget about those other people. Come in last, never come in first. Say, you know what? I'm gonna come back after you've talked to those other people. Just give me one shot, but let me be the last guy. Almost always, you're, you're in the best position when you do that. The presentation. Get all the decision makers there. Can't always happen, but the husband and wife, or the intelligent son that's a new technology freak, you gotta get everybody there. I work really hard to get all the decision makers there, and including subcontractors. If I've got an architect on the project, I want to be at that meeting where the architects will take you down in three seconds. Get as all the decision makers that can screw up this sale there. Even if they're there for five minutes, get them there so there's no question about this. You're walking away with a check. Rewalk the project site. When you sell the project, get them to walk around the project. Because if they have an object objection to anything, it's going to come up there. It's a lot easier for them to come up with an objection when they're out walking around and it's a lot easier for you to overcome it. Share your vision. This is what I see for the project. This is how I see it. 
you're a designer and this, this is your designer role, let them know the passion you have. Let them know what you envision for the project. Dress, act, and talk personify a designer. I do not wear any logo to apparel. I want them to think that I'm something special. In Mormonly, I try to dress professionally and somewhat artistically so they feel like they're in the presence of a designer. Be technical and include installation and controls in your presentation. I bring a Lutron control panel and I show people what's possible. Or I take out my phone and I show them how they can control their lights with the phone. Start putting stuff in their hands. Trial close every step. Ask, probe, and confirm. Is this what you were thinking? And then don't say anything. They'll give you a response. And the close. Get them to agree with your ideas. Review and cover all their priorities. I go over that, review it right before I go out on this sale. I make sure I'm covering all their priorities. Give them your overall vision for the project, which we talked about earlier. But once again, reiterate what it is you see for the project, because they're hiring a designer. They wrote you a check for this design. And then ask for their business. I really want to get started on this project. If they say no, ask why. It's the most powerful word in the sales, why? And you have to ask why and see what they say. Don't say anything. But most people will say if they're a legitimate customer, and they almost always are, they'll say, you know, it's just too expensive. If we could do $7,000 instead of 10, and maybe next year we'll do the other, is that okay? You have to ask why and you have to shut up. Let them come up with a solution. Don't show up as a contractor. Try to put on some sort of an air, some sort of a front when you go behind, up in front of your clients that, you're, you, that sets you apart from your crews. Become a designer just for that moment when you're interacting with them. It's hard. To make more money, you have to be a designer and then an installer. Final step, ask for referrals. That goes without saying. Don't forget the house fixtures. I sell house fixtures all the time. They got the little tiny progress lights that are this big on the garage and it's a $3 million house. Get them to buy something different, even if you're referring them to a designer at a showroom. Ask for additional business. Explain what you're gonna be doing and when you're gonna do it. Under promise, over deliver. Set a realistic schedule, set expectations. Ask for referrals again. Always follow up. Most importantly for me, be there when those lights come up. When those lights come up, you go, I need a check. Great time to ask for referrals, but if you can do it, I'm always there. Even if it's not my project, I'm always there when the lights come on, because there's never a better time than right then.